Hello, welcome to Web of Stories. My name is Melinda. Today is March 12th that I'm filming this and I'm doing my March book haul. That's awfully early in the month to do your book haul, right? It's because I'm cutting myself off. The first 12 days of this month have been freaking crazy and I'm on the wrong screen here and uh, it's got to stop. So I'm just going to do my book haul now and then not buy any more books, at least until I go on vacation. And if I buy any books on vacation, it'll go towards April. But so let me go through what I have so you can see the damage that I have done. So this first chunk of books are pre-orders that I have made that came in. This first one is The Translator's Daughter by Grace Lo Prasad. No clue where I heard about this. I think someone did like books they're excited about and this sounded really good, so I got it. I have no self-control when it comes to pre-orders, just saying. The next one is Thunder Song by uh, Sasha Lapointe. I am going to be reading this and discussing it with, I'm doing a buddy read and we're gonna discuss it with uh, Sarah at Roadworthy. So um, I actually have Sasha LaPointe's first book that I wanna read first and then read this one to see how they compare. Um, but uh, she is a uh, indigenous writer from the like Tacoma Olympia area. Um, and Sarah and I are focusing on um, indigenous writers from the Pacific Northwest, of which there are not many. <laughs> So I do remember why I got that one. I should also say all of my pre-orders um, came from bookshop.org. And the next one I have is the woman, in the, the woman in the Sable Coat by Elizabeth Brooks. This is historical fiction um, about World War II, which I don't normally read, but this one sounded good at the time when I placed a pre-order. I was... Um, tootling through the tin, the tin house, the publisher tin house, their um, website to see what they had coming up. And that's where I saw this. And again, no self-control. So pre-ordered that one. And then next I have Wandering Stars by Tommy Orange, which I have actually been looking forward to. I really enjoyed their there. So I am looking forward to reading this one by Tommy Orange. He is another indigenous writer from, he lives in the, um, he lives in, Oh, he lives in Santa Fe, New Mexico, but he is uh, Cheyenne and Arapaho. But his first book was set in Oakland. So it was about like the um, urban indigenous populations that was there, there. And this one has a connection to there, there, but I'm not sure what it is. This is a dual timeline historical fiction. So that should be fun. And then another pre-order that someone said they were excited about. So I got excited about. It's Whiskey Tender by Deborah Jackson Taffa. Um, this and the translator's daughter are both, you're gonna see again when I do my, my pile of possibilities for April, cause these are both memoirs and I might read them for people April. Okay, those were my pre-orders. I'm gonna stick them over here cause I've got a lot of books. Then last month, I didn't place, uh, I didn't choose anything from book of the month. So I said, okay, I'll choose two this month. And then also this was the month where you get to choose one of their, either the winner or one of the finalists for their book of the year. So I actually ended up getting three books. So the first one I got, which was sort of my normal pick, which was An Anita De Monte Last Last by Xochitl Gonzalez. Last year I read Olga Dice Dreaming by this author with um, my marginalized authors book group. And I enjoyed half of it. <laughs> Um, there were two storylines. I just preferred one storyline over the other by a great deal. Um, so, but I did like her writing, so I am looking forward to reading this. And I recently heard an interview with her, and she seems like a very fun person. So Anita DeMonte laughs last. Then um, this one I chose off my, like, my add-on, and that's The Great Divide by Christina Enriquez. She wrote, let me get the title of the book right. The Book of Unknown Americans, which I read a couple years ago and really enjoyed. This is about the Panama Canal. So this should be fun. Another historical fiction. And then my finalist book that I chose, um, the winner was an Abby Jimenez, I think. Didn't really speak to me, but I chose Wayward, which um, by Amelia Hart, which I have been looking at for a long time. It's historical fiction and witches. So, you know, hey, there you go. So Wayward. Who knows when I'm going to get to these. So this was my book of the month order. Um, let's do this one. Let's do these, this chunk next. Okay. Then 
I am a bookish friend on the Currently Reading podcast, and they had their IPL, um, their IPL list, their independent public, they're, they're, you know, where you get the, the press, the, in, the indie press list. That's what I'm trying to say. That's what IPL stands for. <laughs> They do it each month and they choose a bookstore and then the bookstore gives them recommendations and then we can buy from the bookstore. And so this year's was An Unlikely Story, which is owned by Jeff Kinney, or at least co-owned. I don't know. Maybe he owns it for right now. I don't know. Uh, who, but he wrote Diary of a Whippy Kid. Um, but I, I got two books. I don't usually buy books off that. Um, I just, I mean, unless it really speaks to me, but I, I, it got me in a weak place or these really spoke to me. The first book I got was Hours by Philip B. Williams. So the day before, I had heard Brett talk about this on his his BookTube channel, and I was really interested in it at that point. And then when it showed up on the IPL this month, I was like, "That's a sign. I gotta get it." So uh, this is a this is a hefty one. It is. Let me see the page count here. 576 pages. I'm actually going to be saving this and reading it this summer during uh, the Big Book Summer Challenge event. And then the other one, I'd never heard it before, but they totally sold me. Um, this is a historical mystery fantasy novel. <laughs> and it is The Square of Sevens by Laura Shepard Robinson. So definitely looking forward to this one. Uh, I can't even remember exactly what it's about, except I really thought it was great at the time. It's set in Georgian England. So that'll be fun. I might read this one this month. We'll see. Be good to read like at least one this month, right? Okay, so then, 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 then. I think I've mentioned before about the bookstore I used to go to growing up. And it's in West Salem, my hometown of Salem, Oregon. And it's a primarily used bookstore. They do have a few new books, but it's primarily used. And it started out, it had one little storefront and sort of like a, a line of stores. And then it outgrew that one. So it bought the next storefront. And then it outgrew that and bought the next storefront. So it was like three connected and storefronts. And you had all these little trails to go through. They have since moved since I've last been there, which it's been many years. <laughs> they moved to, they were in like one, one big, bigger place. So you don't have to go through the trails. I kind of miss the little trails. But anyway, we went down to Salem this past weekend for my niece's surprise 18th birthday party. And I said, we're going to be right by this bookstore. And I haven't been in years and years and years. So let's go. And we did. And let me tell you about this bookstore. So I have like a very delightful little thing about this bookstore and a really devastating little thing about this bookstore. The delightful thing is when you walk in, they have like a shelf and then they have like their highlighted kind of new books. What art author do you think they were highlighting? Brian Doyle, who wrote my favorite book, Mink River. So excited. You will see Brian Doyle in this hall. That was the delightful thing. <laughs> the devastating thing was I was checking out and the young woman who was checking me out said, you know, do you have any credit? And I said, well, I doubt it because I did, but it's been a while. And she's like, well, we keep it on the books. I'm like, okay, it's been like 20 years. And she's like, yeah, not that long. I said, yeah, I haven't been here since you were in the, the other location. And she goes, I used to go to that place as a baby. So now I feel old. But anyway, I won't hold it against them. I loved going there. Yes, I will be going back. So I'm going to start with two books that actually are not going to count towards my TBR. Um, I did pick up Hamnet. This is for my keeper shelf. I've already read it um, and I wanted a copy. So that one it's already read. This is this is a no shame book. Not, not that any of these books have shame. It's just the quantity that is sort of shameful. <laughs> and the next book that did not count towards my TBR is Circe by Madeline Miller. I already had an audiobook version of this and I had gotten it and I was like, I want to read this in print and I was kind of waffling and it was there. And, um, th this, this copy is not in the best, well, it was $8 and 50 cents, but it's a used copy. It's not in the greatest condition, but that's fine with me. The pages are all there. It's fine. So looking forward to reading that. Then, then four more books. So first one was Chicago by Brian Doyle. I had never even heard of this book before. It was like, surprise. Um, so I picked up this one. This is set in Chicago, obviously, by Brian Doyle. The next one I got was one I had heard of from him but did not have, and it's Martin Martin. This is a coming-of-age story about a boy, and apparently a Martin, on Mount Hood. So definitely looking forward to this one. They had some other books. They had several new copies of Mink River, a couple copies of The Plover, which I already have, and then some of his nonfiction. And at one point, I did have all the books in my arms. I mean, I was going to buy them all, except for the ones I already had. But then I said, no, I'm just going to buy two novels because I can always go back. 
but you gotta love a store that highlights Brian Doyle. Okay, then I picked up a couple other books. I got um, An Experiment in Love by Hilary Mantel. This is in her pre-Wolf Hall days. This looked interesting. And then because at the time I was just finishing up Brooklyn and really loving it, um, I got Nora Webster by Comte Toybean to read. Um, this one looks pretty interesting too. I actually had just put a Libby hold on it, so cancel that and bought the book. So yeah, um, that's 16 books. That's more than a book a day this month. <laughs> I have cut off, y'all. Just cut off. I say that now, but I'm going to, on, on Saturday, be walking by the downtown Powell's. So again, that'll count. I'll do another, I'll do an addendum if that happens. I hope it doesn't. But yeah. So needless to say, my year goal of finishing the year with my TBR, at least one less than I started, it's, it's looking less and less realistic. So I need to buckle down, read some of these, and uh, quit buying books. Um, but I will also say I do have, in April, I have one, two, three, four, five, um, five pre-orders coming in. Yeah. So that's happening. Yeah. So um, there you go. <sighs> Mea culpa. I have confessed. Forgive me. Thank you very much. Like, subscribe, join my Discord. Let me know down below which of these books you would recommend that I start with? Um, the only one, the only one I'm kind of holding is ours. And that's only because it's a big book. I'm going to read it this summer. So let me know. Thank you very much. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.